Today we're going to be recording pedal steel guitar. Uh, wonderful gentleman uh, by the name of Smokey Fresnel, uh, who's uh, just a fantastic player and a really nice guy. fortunate to work with him a few times, um, quite a few times actually over the years now. And steel is a little bit of a different instrument to record than, than guitar. Like it uses guitar amps-ish um, type amps uh, quite a bit, but it's a very dynamic instrument, much more dynamic than um, uh, standard guitar uh, because players typically are using volume pedals. I usually end up uh, reducing the dynamics of the player a fair bit. Um, you know, come mix time, and I have to be conscious of that uh, for um, uh, when I'm tracking. And one of the big things that I hear when people record steel um, at a, I'm going to say more um, amateur level or um, even, you know, some, you know, I'm going to say bigger studios that, uh, um, are doing like kind of local projects like what this is. It's, um, typically people I find end up using like too much reverb and delay and all that. And it becomes this instrument that you can wash out really easy. And it, it does a lot of that, um, ambient tone by itself. And so what I typically will do, <clears throat> what I'll typically do is, take a close mic, kind of like what you'd do with a guitar cab, and then another mic back farther in the room to catch the room sound, and use that as my first line of attack for reverb, so that it's, it's a little bit more natural, and you can get more of the room sound without sounding like you have uh, reverb um, happening. So uh, I'll bring you through the... Um, uh, console set up and we're it's 8 30 uh, right now and the um, uh, client and the steel player should be here in about half hour um, so from a console setup perspective this is almost pretty well how I do most overdubs um, you know, sometimes I will just record directly on the tracks that I'm going to use to mix but uh, um, I have this track here uh, where I'm going to record everything on this track and then I just drag it down to the one that I want it to be on and I'll name these more as we go. I made a note at the bottom here that the, um, <laughs> and my note is wrong. Uh, what I, the left side is the close mic and right is room mic. And, and I put that note on all the tracks just in case if I, you know, if I only put it on this one uh, that I was overdubbing on to, I uh, probably will erase this track right after the session. So I just don't want to lose that note. Um, and so I have on this one, this is the scratch drum track I did a couple of days ago. It's fairly horrifying. Shuffles are very tough for me to do. Um, I'm going to bring in uh, um, a really good drummer and uh, get this uh, um, shuffle down. And um, uh, But this gives Smokey something to play with. So we have scratch drums, uh, scratch vocal, and the um, bass is not scratch. Um, so the bass is, is there and the guitar is there. So there's those two um, that are really... Uh, um, down. And then we're going to add steel. Steel is what's going to make this song. Um, I'm going to take you out into the live room and show you uh, kind of how I have things set up before the client gets here. And then I'll be able to take you through what they, uh, um, uh, where, how we're set up after. So I'm standing kind of in the general area. Uh, well, actually, the this will be kind of the area where um, we set up the um, pedal steel and then I'll bring this back with me and then kind of back back over in this area um, I'm going to build a little fort with some gobos around the amps and um, so I have things fairly preset out here and I'll just bring you over and show kind of have so I have most things at this table um, that uh, I should need for the session so that uh, things are pretty quick and I can just set up. Um, it'll take him longer to set up than it'll take me to set up. So over at this table here, uh, I have basically everything that I'm going to need um, 
so that I'm not running back to the production storage area um, for when uh, um, our steel player gets here. So I've got the, uh, this mic here is going to be for our room mic. It's uh, an inexpensive ribbon. And then I have a 57 sitting back here that I'm going to use for the amp. I have the headphones sitting behind the waiting room toys that kids like to play with. And sorry about the, uh, there we go. So then over here, um, this is just power um, because uh, I don't know how much gear he's coming with, but it gives me... Uh, um, where I can send him power. I have I have lots of power in the studio, so we have a box right by, uh, this is a 20 amp box right by this table that um, I can send to his rig. Uh, the SM, so I just have the cases here, the SM57 and the, um, and then the reusable um, zip ties for cables. So the mics are plugged into the snake and ready to go. And then I have the gobos sitting over here to build a fort. And uh, we're basically ready to go in this uh, um, where he could walk in now. Oh, and I have music music stand with pens on the uh, um, on the ready here because um, the client is gonna bring in some charts for him and uh, that'll make um, things really easy to set up for him. One of my challenges has been, uh, how do I make this vlog work in the studio where, you know, I have um, clients and uh, um, pro musicians uh, coming in and, you know, it's a little awkward to say to everybody, oh, can I videotape this while we do it? Because most people are not used to just being natural and, uh, you know, on video. And um, so I want the cameras to be really out of the way. This is, uh, so I think what I'm going to try for a while with, uh, artists and, and people that I have in the studio is, you know, ask their permission and say, you know, can I video this? Um, but it's not going to be, you know, uh, interviews with them. If I do, it'll be kind of a separate thing. Um, it'll be, you know, just kind of all introduce it and then you'll just see us working, um, because I don't want to draw attention to the cameras to them because they're here to do a job. They're not here for my video vlog. And, um, uh, so from here on out, I'm not going to have great audio. Um, uh, it's going to be off the cameras and it's going to be far away. Um, but it's going to, uh, um, be natural and be what, uh, um, what actually happened in the room as much as possible, um, from letting people know that they're being videoed. I'm certainly not going to do it in secret and, uh, um, not let them know. Where did you want the, the app? Oh, um, now do you normally put it up on anything or do you, uh, normally put it on the floor? I mean, I'd like to jack it up a little bit. Yeah, whatever you, whatever you so, like. Yeah. Um, Makes no difference to me. Yeah. If we do something like that. There, we'll put it up on here. I, think, I don't think it's going to vibrate off of that. And um, now I know you have a few different rigs, Lesson, like a, a rack thing. You don't have that. Yeah, I know I do. Oh, okay. my pod, yeah. But uh, actually, it's fine if you don't use that, like, because if your equipment were dry, like, either way. Um, well, no, well, I don't have to put any effects on there, but that's, yeah. I, mean, I use that for my, my tone settings. I then you totally use it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that, that's, I just, I, that's my preamp, so. Yeah, yeah, so do you need power? Um, like yes. need probably more than, more just, than just one. Just one? Okay. Yeah. I'll uh, pour on that for you here. Um, so just just sit right right here. Is good. Yeah, so if I throw you right where you are, that's fantastic. And then um, we you can either monitor through cue or just hear yourself in the uh, in the air.
Yeah. Um, so this is this is what I'm thinking at this point. Um, Brenda and I. So I'm I'm looking for uh, like a signature riff kind of thing. This is Steel is going to make this song. Okay. Um, and unfortunately, you're playing along with scratch drums. Um, I was saying to Brenda, my shuffle is like that. I call it the drunken sailor shuffle. Um, <laughs> uh, and a scratch vocal, um, but there is uh, the final bass track and uh, guitar track, um, rhythm guitar, yes. and then um, so there's these uh, kind of small instrumental parts that are basically G major, A minor, um, that we want you know this similar, a similar same signature riff over, and then there's a solo section. Okay. Does that kind of make sense? Sure. Um, so just starting at the beginning. Um, Super simple for you. Uh, we'll put in. We'll do like a track of fills, and then the song. Okay, makes sense. Yeah. All in an easy morning for smoking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sounds good. Yeah. So, um, and then, so I guess it's it's up to you, like um, what you want to focus on first. It doesn't matter to me. Oh, um, just just uh, let me play through the track. Uh, and then you can tell three me three or what four you're times. Doing. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. I'll just put it on a loop, and you can just. How about it? That'd be great. Okay, cool. We're done. Do we need the music stand now? No, it's, I got one here, but. Q-Mix as far as, yes, it's working, or no, it's not. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Are we going to turn your hand on? Is this, it's on. Oh, okay. Is this two or solid state? It's solid. Solid state, yeah, cool. Or no. 
Um, so you're you're good. You got volume, all that good stuff. attention to it so that you uh, have a chance to say yes or no. <laughs> okay, I'm sure everything you do is usually uh, good. It, thank you. The, uh, so Ultimate goal. 